Raymond. Play the song. I'm going to have to edit out the first two seconds. Here we go. All right, blast that little tune. Ready? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, have we got a hot show for you tonight. Live from Studio A at 438 Massachusetts Avenue, Cambridge, Massachusetts, courtesy of Arnegolia Productions. You saw them taking advantage of the buffet table at the Dumpling House last Friday, and they're yes. here for you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Anything Goes with Larry and Ray. Yes. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, All right. wonderful. Well, here we are, episode three. Season Why one. Episode one. No, I'm Larry. You in case you like... forgot, because it's been five long And I'm Ray, in case you've forgotten. Yeah. So, we have a show. You seem very refreshed. I am. I had a nice nap today, actually. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't get a good night's sleep last night, because my dog decided to sleep with me, because my wife was out late with her girlfriend, so the dog jumps in the bed. I have really no control over this wow. little puppy. Wow. And, uh, you know, she's tossing and turning, she's dreaming, she thinks she's running through a dewy meadow at 3 in the morning. So needless to say, I probably only had a few hours of sleep. Wow, but you seem really, you're right on. Well, you know, I took a power nap at 12.30, right after lunch. Well, it was like four hours or something? Yeah, it was like you an hour and a half. Like half an hour. It, just, it gave me a nice little boost. So you're all set. You can I'm go ready skyrocket to go. Yeah. Like midnight, 2 a.m. maybe. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting wow. show. And for those you viewers who don't know Larry's uh, circadian rhythms, rhythms that yeah. well, he usually dozes off between like 4 and 7. That's Every day. True. Not just weekends, but I mean at work and the yeah, ride, the ride home, yeah, is really, the the ride ride home is really interesting. <laughs> Weaving in and out. In fact, it's going to really benefit when the first driverless cars come out. That's true. I'm just going to sit in the back and take a nap. <laughs> you <laughs> should. I, I, electric and driverless, that's the way to go. That is the way to go. Yeah, but really what's hard. happened since we last uh, aired five weeks ago? We have had an exciting few weeks, or semi-exciting. Sure. Um, Thanksgiving dinner at your house. Yes. Fantastic. We had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I actually cooked the bird. Um, and I have to say it was a most succulent and quite delicious bird. Fully dressed. Fully dressed. I wish I could say <laughs> the same thing about my company. I was half dressed. He was fully dressed. Yeah, he's a little too comfortable in his sweatpants and t-shirt hanging up. Yeah, he said, just come as you are. So I came in my you know, shirt and underwear. I was wearing, it's cold, so I was wearing it, you know, it was, It's a disturbing <laughs> image. Let's, uh... Let's not necessarily share all no, of no, the go there. gruesome details. Um, but the bird was bird. great. Yeah, was I cooked it quickly. Very quickly, yeah, 10 minutes. No, it was three hours. I don't hours. want to tell you what it tasted like. That was crispy on the outside, frozen on the inside. No, seriously, it was Well, it was good. only the first time I made a turkey, actually. It was good. You cooked, uh, you cooked it in three hours. Three so hours, right? and it, was, it typically takes yeah. four hours because it's 13 minutes per pound. But my oven is very fast. In fact, it defies the laws of physics. In fact, isn't it true that I once made grits in five minutes when it takes the grit cookie population usually 20? That's true. He's, he's great with that. I once yeah. cooked a three-minute egg in two minutes, actually. Yeah. So after so, knowing each other that long, you learn how to do stuff. And you try to break there. a few rules or perhaps break a few yeah. eggs in our case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we have a lot of pies. Oh, the pies. Yep. It was a fantastic pie extravaganza. Great pie. There were four people and only th and three pies, actually. And the ratio was just right, so it's like three-quarters of a pie per person or something like that? Yeah. Or vice versa. We had huckleberry, peach, boysenberry, blueberry. Peach cobbler, right. um, chocolate pie, apple chocolate pie, pecan. chocolate pecan, yep. uh, pumpkin. Um, wonderful pie. I brought a pumpkin pie from Peepsy Pies. Ah. And do you know where, does our audience know about Peepsy Pies? Yeah, good stuff. Oh, in oh, fact, yeah. well, why don't you talk about... Who are trying to get? Well, on our tickets. birthday special, which is a, in a month, roughly January seventh. His my, birthday, my, my, not my, mine. But. During the birthday special, and Renee from Pizzi's Pies, who Raymond actually, you know, struck up a little friendship with, and she has actually agreed to perform on a future episode. We're hoping it's going to be the birthday special. Yeah, she's uh, the proprietor of Pizzi Pies. She is so, so good. Would you compare her to uh, like a Julia Child level yeah. of baking ability? The galloping gourmet Julia Child. Yeah. Something. I don't know if she gallops, but she's uh, she can bake. She is a gourmet. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. She's so, really great. So. Yeah, they have fantastic, uh, and they have savory pies. They have meat pies. They have fruit pies. And scones. Don't forget scones. Oh, yeah, that's true. Obviously, we're trying to get a free meal out of this, so. <laughs> For not just for pizza pies. That's really our goal of doing the show, actually. Yeah. We, once we get a free meal or a free movie pass, we're kind of done. We're going to say that's the finale. In fact, if it's a Domino's delivery people who can't find the delivery location, yeah. come here to 438 Mass Ave. Our producer, Will, would probably love some pizza about this time of day. Studio audience, maybe? Yes? Oh, oh yeah. For sure. Okay. They look like pie lovers to me. Of course they do. Yeah. 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 So what else? We had, oh, people binge-watched binge -watched the show. Is that bit. right? Yep. 
Yep, a lot of my Everybody friends kids watched Thanksgiving. our show yeah. over the Thanksgiving holiday. Of course, the whole experience just took like 40 minutes because there's only been two shows. Right, and one was cut short due to technical difficulties. Exactly. So basically, they binge watched it during the appetizers. Right. So there were a lot of burnt advertisers, I understand, <laughs> around exactly. the Grand Cambridge area. I know. I've gotten the bill already for many of those. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, but it's friends tend to complain. They do. It's their yeah. nature. Yeah. But it was a great time at your house. Thank you and your lovely wife, Anna, yeah. for hosting me. Well, um, yeah, and your appetite. And my appetite. Yeah. And you did it. There were four of us, but we set a table for eight. Because, you know, Ray, Ray enjoys a good, you know, long dinner. He's right. And I was a little bit disappointed that normally, like after a meal, I like to launch right into the dessert, maybe five or ten minutes later. I don't know about you guys in the studio audience, maybe not. Ten minutes. Mostly we're getting a mixed reaction. Ten minutes? Ten minutes. Okay. We waited like three hours, though. Well, you know. Tell, go ahead. Well, you're going to digest. So, you know, we went over to the couches in a little bit of a comatose fashion for a while because, right. you know, that's tradition, too. Yeah. Right? Building anticipation, right? Exactly. <laughs> Eagerly anticipating those fantastic pies. So, you know, and after a while, I, I got to be hungry when I ate the pies. Yeah. But, it, you know, and I, I did, you know, sort of recoup that hunger after a while, but it was quite a delay. You yeah, know, it was you know, a delay. I wanted to see if you could handle the, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the delay. It was pie torture is what yeah. it was, because the pies were fantastic. They were good. And the delay. Yeah. And what else? So people binge watched the show, mm -hmm. um, had a lot of great feedback. We watched uh, the American Music Awards. We oh, watched uh, right. the Diana Ross, uh, you the know, Diana Lifetime Ross Achievement Award. Tribute. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. she looks amazing. She really She's is. She's what, 70? 72, I think. Is I that think right? 72, 72. Do you guys know? I think well. she's the same age as Neil Diamond. <laughs> really? Maybe Not a little bit younger. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, she looks great. Yeah. And How about her little grandson? Stole the show. If you yeah. guys haven't seen the AMAs, yeah. just Google it. Um, Larry and I will probably on, be on there next year. And some maybe well, seat fillers. I don't know, but yeah, we'll, best, we'll make our way into the Seat fillers, or you know, point. maybe aisle boys. Could be aisle boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Could do that. Um, and you did bring a bottle of prosecco, which was very nice. Although we never got to that. That was by design. I brought the prosecco, knowing yeah. that they had other alcoholic beverages there, and that if I come over for Christmas, the prosecco is already in there and all set. That way, you don't have to scramble at the last minute, get alcohol, and yeah. bring it over. How about that? I love it. Listen, yeah. before we're getting uh, the show is rolling along, which I love. But we should really talk about um, the Canby Awards. Oh, the Canby. Right, are you guys familiar with the Canby Awards? Yeah. No. Before the Globies and what are the other ones? The SBs. The SBs. <laughs> well, CCTV, Cambridge Community Television, actually is having their first ever wow. Canby Awards. And we actually have been nominated in the best new show in the comedy category. And we're competing against a show about baking soda and a kangaroo that plays the cymbals. Nice. Yeah, I heard yeah. the baking soda documentary, though, is really, really intense. Yeah. So we're not expecting to win. It's sort of just nice to be in the mix. Yeah. You know? Well, literally in the mix. I think that's you know, you can, you can make a lot of things with baking soda. You can. You I don't can. really have any recipes ready you to know, share. But. I feel bad for the olive oil. Yeah. Um, Documentaries because they're not, they didn't make the cut. Right. We were the, the top three. Yep. And stuff. So yeah. All right. That's good. What else you want to share? Um, took some notes here. Yep. Talk yeah. about Chen a little bit again. I, I, heard, thought... I heard that Chen, you and Chen had an issue with Curb Your Enthusiasm. Well, we did actually. So I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. And uh, but, you know, it comes on at ten o'clock at night. My DVR is on the blink, so I had to actually watch it at ten o'clock, which I hate to do. And um, so, you know, I'm excited again. I'm on the couch, you know, my wife and the dog are, you know, in the back of the condo. And uh, I turn on 10 o'clock, I turn on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and all of a sudden, I hear like a harumph, like a dog's harumph coming from the back of the house. Well, Chen, my dog, goes to bed at 9.45. And she was, hey, look, we have oh, a call. Oh, we got a call. I want to hear about oh, what a harumph is, right, well, Should we take this yeah, call? Yeah, let's take this call. Let's take the call and we'll finish with the harumph. Anything goes with Larry and Ray. This Go. is the first call of the night. Who's calling, please? Uh, this is Scott. This Scott. Is, uh, Scott. Oh, my God. Scott who? We know so many Scots. We know like 30 Scots. Can you, you narrow it down? You can hold your last name. You can just use an initial if you Believe want. Believe me, I think you want to hold your last name. You don't want people to know you're calling well, in. I'm not so sure about that. Uh-oh. Anyway, this is a, uh, a New York, Boston Scott. Wow. 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 New York, Boston Scott. Well, you know, I heard, the, I think the Jets won today, but you might be more of a Giants fan. I forget. Yeah, I'm more of a Giants fan. Ah, okay. You still going to talk to us now? I didn't see it. You, right we do now. like the Patriots up there. Of, yeah. Didn't we win seven in a row today? I think we did. Unfortunately, yeah. the Giants have their own controversy with Eli Manning being benched. And how do you feel about that, Scott? Well, you know, I'm not too happy about it overall. Yeah. Uh, but Geno Smith doesn't look terrible today. Right. Hey, did Larry ever tell you uh, about that game? Which game? Oh, the game. Oh, the, the Foxborough game. 
That's They're right. Okay. Scott used to live up in Boston probably 15 years ago. Yeah, so far. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened during the game? It was cold, was it not? Oh, it was very cold. Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was like minus 30 degrees. Wow, minus 30. And with Larry sitting minus beside you, it was probably colder. Yeah. I do cast a chill. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> they well, call him the, the ice prince. prince. <laughs> the, that was the, appearance, the first appearance of the turtle. That's right. So Scott had a jacket, and it was so cold, he literally, his head somehow disappeared into the vortex wow. of the top of the jacket, and he would pop out every little few minutes or so, much like a turtle pops out of the shell when it, when, when it knows it's safe to do so. Or to say there's going to be six more weeks of winter. Right. Is yeah. that... <laughs> Is that your recollection? Did Larry ever tell you that he can, he can kick as high as Bruce Lee? Yes. What? If you guys have ever seen, I don't know if you guys saw our last episode, because maybe there's only a few of you out there that did it, but um, Larry did a little bit of dancing when we had our Blues Brothers puppeteer on. That's and true. And he did do the leg kick. He did do the leg kick. He did save that for the finale. Yeah. I once did try it out with the Rockettes, though, because I swear, I think I can kick almost as high as a young Rockette. Well, maybe more of a middle-aged rocket. He just missed the cut. You know, there's affirmative action with the rockets. He was the only male. And there was like 600 rockets. And I did. I think I did file some type of... Uh, he wrote a strongly worded letter. Yes, it was, it was very strongly Extremely worded. Extremely strong. So he's too better than us. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you have this high kicking. There's low kicking. You're good with the low yeah. kicking. Yeah. And in fact, I do recall a time Scott once used to host all these fantastic... Uh, parties, you know, wow. we were young, we were carefree, uh, Scott lived in the South End, he had this spectacular apartment, he'd invite a lot of people over, but around, you know, 11 o'clock, just as the party's kicking into gear, and Scott is starting to get a little bit sleepy, um, he has a fantastic technique on how to, like, kind of end a party. Do you recall, Scott? Uh, does it have something to do with an electrical appliance? It uh, certainly does. I think it's an electrical Wait a minute, this is huge. I think our studio audience, as well as our 30 or 40 viewers, would love to hear this technique. So, yes. set the background. It's basically called turning on the vacuum cleaner when you kind of want to clear out a room. All right? This is genius, actually. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was fine for me because I had all the leftovers. But you, you did chase all the, uh, you know... We were actually trying to minimize the competition. We knew there was an, a gaggle of uh, ladies coming over later that evening. <laughs> and oh, we yeah. felt the competition was a little... No, this is, this is groundbreaking. So basically, you want to wrap up the party, right? You get all these people there. You're tired. So what happens? You pull out the vacuum, you turn it on. Yeah, and people leave. Yeah, you turn it on. You start vacuuming around people. They so excuse me, and they get dance. You know, I made a mistake then, because I had a party about two years ago that Larry was at. A great party, but it went out a little bit too long, and I used a dust buster, and nobody could hear it. That's probably why. Yeah, you need high power. <laughs> you need high power, yeah. right? You know, so I, I just learned something, Scott. You know, Tesla's coming well, out with it. You know what? I mean, Larry also had an amazing entrance the first time he ever came into my apartment. That's true. Really? Tell us about it. Yeah, it was a Halloween party. I was dressed in one of my favorite costumes, Groucho Marx. Not everybody knows Groucho. <laughs> so I was, I was ascending his stairs at like three stairs at a wow. time, very, you know, very low, crouched, but yet high, stepping. And I didn't realize this was my first time in Scott's apartment. He had some type of a glass um, skylight that kind of stopped oh, abruptly. Right. And literally millimeters before I, I hit that skylight, because I might have gone right through it, um, well, somebody screamed, stop. I'd, love to, with, stop, I I'd love to see when that costume, that outfit. Yeah. Maybe well, during our Mardi Gras show in February. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Which you're welcome, anybody's yeah. welcome, I mean, it'll be all over the air. Scott was dressed as Fidel Castro, as I recall. Wow. Uh, Alec and I were both. That's true. Oh, yeah, true. oh you mentioned. You say uh, a secret word and it doesn't You mentioned Alec, you know, for those of you who don't know Alec, he's my arch nemesis. That's true. So you didn't that's realize that, Scott. Oh, that's going to take up a whole show yeah. for another time. We <laughs> call it a dark night. That's going to take up your whole show, but I just want to ask you a question right now. Yeah. Did you think... When you speak to Larry sometimes, you talk to Larry David instead of Larry? I do. You know, that's a compliment, actually. Everything's kind of derivative, and there's a little bit of Larry David, the, the neuroses part, maybe, you know? Yeah, the, neurotic the, Jewish male. He said neurotic, yeah. self-proclaimed, yeah. neurotic <laughs> Jewish male. Right. But, you know, the interesting thing is Larry was Larry before Larry. Right. Yeah. That's well put. You know what? Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He stole my thunder. Wow. <laughs> Well, well thank you, Scott, for calling yeah, in. Wonderful call. We don't want to delay any longer because we have a spectacular guest coming on. Unbelievable guest. In only moments away. So thank you so much for calling, Scott, from well, New York. York. And I guess I'll have to watch it 
on the air to see who that gets it. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be on, on. Yeah, we'll be on YouTube in a few it's days. It's going to be a magical delight. So thank you very much for the call. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Call any time. Okay. Usually when we're on thank the air. You. And without, <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. And without further ado, we have for you tonight a most spectacular magician slash comedian. He Wait, goes by the name. Call. Another call. Sorry, folks. All right. We are so take popular. It? Take All the right. call right there. Anything goes with Larry and Ray. Next caller, please. Hit it. Hello. Hello. On the air. Hello. This is John Smith, a longtime listener, first time caller. Oh, John Smith. God. John Smith. Wow. You Talk from, about your unique name. From the Mayflower? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, Joe, we should tell you we're about we're we're bumped up against our magical act. But share, give us, ask us a question or share a comment, and we're going to have to uh, you know make it a little bit on the short side. And if you're locked in your parents' basement, we'll send somebody yeah. out to get you. That's true. If you need the fire department, just let us know. Right. We've got but a direct line. Have a magic related question. Oh, fantastic! Wow. This is know. perfect. <laughs> Yeah, because I heard you were going to have a magician on the set. That's right. So, so, audience. Audience. Yes. You're going to get to see him momentarily. Yeah. So, I want to do a magic trick. I'm an amateur magician myself. Yeah. And it's one where I have somebody with an empty glass, an empty wine glass. I put a handkerchief over it. I do this little focus, focus, blah, blah, blah. And then I have my guest who is there pull the handkerchief off. And it has a glass of wine. Wow. But the one thing I haven't figured out yet is what temperature do I serve the wine? <laughs> is it a red or white? <laughs> it's a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, then go right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> We'd say 58, 49 to 56 degrees. Excellent. That solves my problem. That's a great wow. question. Wow. That's That's really a Perfect. <laughs> Perfect magician question. I'd love to see that yeah. trick. Yeah. All right, well, perhaps on the birthday special, you'll both come and uh, you know share that extravaganza. There will be champagne on set. Mm. Yeah. Right. She's That's a lovely woman. Wonderful. All right. Champ what's yeah. your name? Yeah. Champagne. King. King. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John Thank Smith. Thank you so much, John Smith, for calling. I will. Very good. Take care, John okay. Smith. Okay, so back to the amazing Wellington. He is here tonight to dazzle the senses. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the amazing Wellington. He is a combination magician and comedian, much like Steve Martin, if you remember back in the day. He could perform tricks. He won't have an arrow through his cap, uh, but you're going to see other tricks. Um, but but be, above and beyond his magic and comedy, I understand he's a talented salsa dancer. I understand he is experienced and certified in the art of close quarter combat fighting. Wow. And he's perhaps he's gonna, if we have time, he's going to spar with Raymond before the end of the show, which is very apropos because Festivus is only two weeks away. Right. I usually don't spar in an empty stomach, but I'll make an exception. You That's know, right. I'll work up an appetite for the after-dinner meal that we, we treat our guests with a lovely Indeed. meal. Indeed. He's this. also a veteran of the Marines yep. and... This is my favorite part. An out-of-work hairdresser, which I really want to peel that, you know, onion, because I obviously could use a few, uh, you know, follicle you tips. some work. All right, so without any further ado, everybody, please welcome the amazing Wellington. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks for coming. Feel free to stand. I think our Whatever producer you will may come in. If you Ladies and gentlemen, our producer Will is coming you in to help us with the camera angles. Go ahead. Okay. So we're gonna just adjust the camera. He's out of the way. Oh well. You guys are gonna love this. Yeah. And it's Larry again. So wherever you want to do it. Yeah, we can just perfect. Yeah. All cool. right. Yeah. Oh, and of course we have the lovely Kate that may join us momentarily as well. Kate, you want to? Can we yeah. say hello to the people for a second? Well, let's just welcome the show. All right, quick hello. Because it's always good to be yes. the assistant up here. All right. This, this, All right. Same. This is the amazing <laughs> Wellington's beautiful assistant. <laughs> All right, nice. so, uh, Kate, why don't you come over here and All we'll right. uh, start the show. Great. So, whenever you think of magic, what do you, what's the first thing that pops in your head? Corny. Corny. What wow. about things that curing and missing? That's an honest reaction. Power it's move. Cool. Okay. Uh, but what about things appearing and disappearing and then reappearing again? Rabbits. Rabbits. Doves. What about if I were to like rub this table and like make a ball appear like that? Wow! Wow! You see go. But then you think like, okay, cool, he can make a ball up here. But like, what if like you take that ball, right? That you think is just one, 
and you like kind of rub it into the table and then out of nowhere you go, <gasps> Oh my god! <laughs> what? Let me see bro! And then you're like, alright, cool, but he could have totally been holding those, mm. you know, in his hand. And you're like, okay, well, what if you can make it appear by count? So you start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then shake. Uh oh! So it can get tricky when you have just two walls. Mm. So then what if we just go ahead and add maybe another one? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have you hold up your hand like that. We're going to do one ball. Wow. And then we're going to do two, two balls. And I'm going to have you squeeze really tight. Squeeze tight, squeeze tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and have you hold it over. And on three, I have nothing in my hand, okay? On three, I'm going to have you open it right here so okay. we don't drop anything on the floor. I'm gonna go one, two, three. So okay, so you know how that works. So let's just say that we're gonna try it again. Now let me do the magic this time. Alright, alright. Alright, all right, so I'm gonna give you that one. Thank you. That two. Yes. And this three. And I want you to hold it real tight. Yeah. Okay, now try not making any matter, right? No. So, one, two, snap. Whoa! Bravo! This is live TV. No hidden cameras. What's going on here? We're all witnesses. Yeah. All right. So, so apparently, we're apparently, apparently you're pretty good in the Yeah. Game. All right. I'm going to see if I can do some math then, since I am not that good of a magician compared to you. Okay. Um, all right. So, I'm going to take this ball. Yes. Okay. I'm going to take this ball and put it in this hand, and I'm going to take this ball, and I'm going to put it in my pocket. Mm -hmm. How many balls should I have in this hand? One. All right. Whoa! Whoa! Zero! <laughs> and you get to keep that as a uh, present. Look at that! Yay! Wow! Good job, everybody. Well, he's great. Well, he's great. Well, he's great. Well, he's great. Oh, yeah. the coach. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you want to do one more trick? Yeah, or? I got it. Oh, good trick. This is a really good trick. One. Oh, there's chains. Okay. Oh, chains. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But um, that's really wonderful, and of course your assistant was great. Yeah. But we heard before Kate was around. The reason Kate is even here, we understand you used to have a previous assistant, but some there was an unfortunate <laughs> incident. Uh -oh. Yeah, one and, cutting someone in half yes. to go wrong. Don't try it at home. Right, right. But Nate, I think it was just turned out to just be a flesh wound. Yeah, just a flesh. So it's, it's, like a, it's a paper cut. It's yeah. Like a paper. But how did you start you, man? Yeah. How did you originally get into it? Um, I, I saw that movie, uh, Now You See Me, and uh, it came out maybe He's like right? four or five years ago. Of course, then. Yeah. 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 It's magician With uh, Jesse yeah. Eisenberg. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Wow. Wow. And, oh, the uh, Cambridge Eisenbergs. Wow. The different Eisenbergs. Actually, yeah. I had yeah. a I didn't have to see more Eisenberg. That's a story for another time. It's <laughs> only yeah. two minutes. <laughs> I saw that movie and just yeah. got into it after that. No. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody needs a place to start and needs inspiration. Yeah. But back to from the intro, <clears throat> our understanding is before magic, there was hairdressing. Is that true? Yeah, I did that for about four years. Wow. I uh, got out of the Marine Corps and yeah. I wanted to do something where there was crazy people around and sharp mm -hmm. objects. Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> so, can you ever combine the Marine Corps with hairdressing and magic? There's got to be a way to do it. Yeah, I think if you ever have to deal with someone difficult, you know, you could either rely on one like of those. <laughs> Wow, hear that? I know how to handle you now. You know, I once caught I am your handler. I did once caught, catch you running down the hallways with scissors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In your apartment building. <laughs> have you ever met Mona Lisa Vito? I have not. You have not, okay. Well, Raymond, we're running low on time. We have about 40 seconds left. Unfortunately, we keep promising you what guys. What about the this. trumpet? Well, we don't have time for the trumpet. Oh my now. God, I know. we have to play the trumpet. So, the third the episode, season. and we're, you we guys are waiting to hear Larry play the trumpet. Yes. We're going to have to do it on the birthday. Are we off in 30 in seconds, January. William? Is that, that's it. Robin, so thirty no seconds. Time for that. No time for Any? that. We want to thank our guests. We will be taking them out to uh, dinner as we do yeah. all of our guests Kate's after included. the show. She's Kate's included. Did you bring right. your wallet? I hope so because we <laughs> forgot ours. Well, I think we have. I think we have an unlimited budget at the Anything Goes with Larry and Ray program. We do now that yeah. we're famous. It's called your trust fund. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which is now gone. All right, guys. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a few weeks. All right. Have fun storming the castle. Take care.